Well, good morning, everybody. Hopefully uh, everybody can hear me and the lovely Kim is here as well. So we'll just wait a few minutes for people to turn up. We already have Brendan and Joy in the chat, which is fantastic. And uh, you'll probably notice that I've got some furry friends in the background there, my two cheese taste testers. Hopefully there won't be too much trouble today. Joyce just mentioned that uh, she really enjoyed the video on the cranberry cheese just in time for Christmas. Thank you, and it was perfect timing. It was a lovely little cheese too. So, and a new shirt. Well, not so new. I've had it in the drawer for a while. This one's from uh, YouTube when I went to a YouTube Creators Lab. Oh, year and a half, maybe two years ago now. Goodness me, um, when my channel just pipped ten thousand subscribers. So. Um, they gave me the T-shirt and wished me good luck, and I followed their advice, and here we are today, nearly at 80,000 subscribers. So, yes, it is a new shirt. <laughs> Hopefully over uh, my holiday break, we'll be getting uh, some time to design some new cheesy ones. I think Kim was having a go at some, but I don't know how far that went. I think it might be a Christmas surprise. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, Deep South Test, Texas. Um, g'day, how are you? All right, um, says we've got uh, six watching. There's probably some more coming in. Just found these. Ah, Wall, how are you? I have some fluff on it above the U. Thanks, Kim. What would I do without you, darling? <laughs> and g'day to Scott as well. Uh, and Danny, g'day, mate. How are you? All right, so let's kick the show off. Well, g'day, curd nerds. G'day, curd nerds. Well, 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 welcome to Ask the Cheese Man. This is episode 47, I believe, uh, where I will attempt to answer your home cheese making questions. I've uh, got a few more people on. We've got uh, Naveed, we've got Michelle, we've got the Red Walrus, we've got Mark, Philip, and Stephen. G'day to you all. Now, just a few bits of housekeeping. Um, last week, as you know, there was no show. Um, Kim and I went to visit Inglenook Dairy. Um, mainly the processing part, plant part of it, um, to check out how they made their milk and how they bottled it and pasteurised and all that sort of stuff. Here's a quick picture of uh, me and Troy, um, who's one of the guys that runs the dairy. Uh, it's a family business, so great little, um, great little business there. Uh, and there is the uh, the milk, the unhomogenised milk. It was fresh that day, and uh, I had the pleasure of using it for a um, a cheese that I made last weekend, which was a fontine, a uh, fontina, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so yeah, that was a really good uh, cheese. When you can get milk that fresh and unhomogenized but pasteurized, um, it uh, it just worked so well. The cheese, the curd set was amazing, and all that sort of stuff. So that was absolutely fabulous. So that was a lovely trip out to. Um, to Inglenook Dairy, and there'll be a, a proper video on that um, uh, coming soon. Um, also, in the cheese fridge, uh, or in production, the video is coming up, uh, there's uh, Saint-Moncel, which is uh, blooming well in the... It's a blue cheese, hard blue cheese. So, um, uh, And queso chihuahua, uh, of all things, which is uh, very similar to cheddar. Um, but we'll be having a video of that soon. And uh, Fontina is another one over the next coming weeks. So uh, lots of good videos coming out. Don't forget that during the show that you can um, you can super chat. The little dollar sign down there. Um, any funds um, are warmly accepted. Uh, and with the, um, the changes to Patreon lately where um, I used to take on all the fees that Patreon's now decided that the um, 
the supporters take on the fees, we've had a mass exodus at our Patreon. Uh, so, uh, and I'm talking 25% of the subscriber base is gone um, at a Patreon just because of the, the change they've made. Anyway, so let's get on with the show. Um, so we've got a few questions here. Um, let's have a look. Um, where are we? Uh, well, the first, well, the first comment is from Mackenzie from Scotland. I uh, love your videos. So informative. Just wondered what cheese you can age in a standard fridge apart from Bel Paese. Um, well, there's feta, uh, obviously. Uh, that's a good cheese to, uh, if you're into those sort of strong, salt, very salty fermented cheeses. Uh, feta's a good one that you can age in the standard fridge. There aren't too many others, really, um, because as soon as you put it, the cheese down to four degrees Celsius, you, um, you're basically slowing down the entire cheese making process. So Bel Paese is one of the go-to ones if you haven't got a cheese cave, um, as far as aging in the standard fridge. Uh, Keith said, um, even though he's from Wisconsin, uh, I wonder what is the easiest cheese to make for the first cheese? Um, uh, Keith, usually um, I ask, I tell people to try in this order. Um, sweet ricotta, uh, paneer, then halloumi, uh, which is nice and simple, and then have a go at um, a quick mozzarella, which is a good choice. Um, but it takes a little bit of finessing to get quick mozzarella right. Um, and g'day to Joseph. And Brendan's got an easy one for me, he reckons. Uh, do you have any other books other than the Keep Calm and Make Cheese book? I thought you'd done another one, or are you still finishing that? I want to put it on my Christmas list. Um, as in books that I'm writing. Yes, look, I've got one in production, but the shop's been so busy before Christmas. Uh, we, uh, I just haven't had time. So I've got, I think it's up to chapter two. Um, and I haven't even got to the recipe pages yet. So um, I don't think it'll be on anybody's Christmas list. It would have been ideal, of course, uh, as another ebook, but uh, unfortunately, Brendan, it just hasn't happened yet. Um, Joy says, I saw your lactose free cheese video and it was fun to watch you and Amy taste test it. She liked it. I never thought lactose free will be as good as it seems to be. Awesome. Yeah, it was a pretty good cheese, Joy. Really did surprise me. I didn't have much hope for it. I didn't know what the taste profile would be like. But um, because the uh, lactic bacteria obviously uh, chowed down on the glucose and the galactose, it had a little bit of a different flavour. Had, As Amy said, it had a bit of a whiny flavour um, and would go really nice with a, a Sav Blanc, uh, or Sauvignon Blanc, which is a lovely dry white wine. So, no, nah, really cool. Um, uh, greetings from, where are we? North Carolina. Um, where are we? Sorry, I've made a, I've zipped past everybody here. Oh, where are we? Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, Jim, thank you very much, mate. Um, Asman, g'day. Uh, Noah says, Gavin, I've tent the mozzarella twice. Uh, both times occurred. Hasn't set once a rennet was added. Temps were right, and I'm complete, com, at a complete loss. Thanks a million. Uh, no, usually it's the milk, um, if you're following the recipe down to the T. And it could be the strength of the rennet tablets you're using as well. Um, make sure that the milk you're using is, um, if you can get pasteurized, unhomogenized, then you shouldn't have too much trouble setting a curd. If you're using ultra-pasteurized milk, there's no way um, that you will be able to set a curd. So um, check the milk. Also, the rennet strength that I'm using, uh, the tablets, each tablet sets 50 litres of milk, and I use half a tablet, so I'm really over-renneting to get a stretchy curd. It doesn't affect the taste or anything. Um, so those rennet tablets I use are very strong. They're called uh, Fromaise 50 is the brand of rennet tablet that I use to uh, to make the quick mozzarella. Okay, Jimmy, g'day, mate. Um, Stephen, what's the best tasting cheese that is quick to make? Uh, I would say my go-to cheese, if I want to impress somebody, 
with a very quick cheese that only takes three weeks to mature. That's from making to mature. Then Kefili is your baby. So try that one. There's a video there somewhere. Um, Mark says, I purchased a used wine cooler for my cheese cave. Works great. Uh, yeah, I had some good experience with the wine cooler until our summer here and it got really hot. And the wine, the cheese fridge or the wine cooler would not go down in temperature because it wasn't a proper refrigerator one. Um, uh, Gadir says, um, hi, Gavin, do you recommend using ultrasonic humidifier in a cheese cave? Um, I actually don't raise the humidity in my cheese fridge at all. I either vacuum pack it or wax it. Uh, and any cheeses that I want high humidity in, I put them in a ripening box. Uh, so that's how I get around that because mucking around with humid humidifiers is a pain in the bottom, unfortunately. Danny says, hi, Gavin. When I was making my cheddar, my curds came out a little bit rubbery uh, after I did the cheddaring process. Uh, after I did the first press, I could see the cubes of cheese cool. Uh, chew. <laughs> after I did the first press, I could see the cubes of cheese still. What caused this? Um, normally they're like that, uh, Danny. Uh, and then on the second pressing, I think there's a third pressing for cheddar. Not too sure. They actually compact in um, because that's what gives you the crumbly texture um, in the cheddar cheese. Um, so you may have stirred a little bit too long. You might have seen in some recent videos where I do a test. I put my hand into the pot of curds, grab some curds, squeeze them, press them with, and, and if they stay squeezed, and then let go, and if they stay squeezed, um, then you're halfway there. If you can then press your thumb into it and they break apart, then the curds are ready to press. Uh, so I usually test about 10 minutes before the stirring time's supposed to be up. Um, but try that next time. But it sounds like you've done everything right. I, I had cubes as well um, on my first pressing, not so pronounced as you could see cubes, but they were squished together. But you could see the outline of them still. When I got up to 22 kilos or 50 pounds of pressure on the second pressing, there was no issue. All right, I'll move along. Um, Joseph, what should I do if I don't get a clear cut of the curd, even though I passed the time mentioned by double? Um, either wait a bit longer if you're patient or uh, turn it into uh, ricotta. <laughs> strain it, whatever whatever consistency it's in at the moment. Uh, I would strain it through a tight weave cheesecloth, not one of the not one of the uh, loose weave ones. All the curds will go straight through it. But a tight weave cheesecloth, and uh, and you'll get a a nice cream cheese sort of thing out of it. Um, if not, if if it's still milky, then just add some vinegar to it, and um, and you'll get a sweet ricotta. Um, but check your rennet definitely. Uh, it's either rennet when it, when when the when the curds doesn't set, it's either rennet or the milk, um, or your starter cultures didn't acidify the um, the milk enough. Uh, and that may not be working. So three things you've got to check for. Okay, Jeffrey said, uh, my first time watching, glad to see you. Uh, made your Parmigiana, I need to wait four to six months. Um, I'm waiting 12 months for mine because I found that it improves with flavour. The first time, first one I made, I cracked open at 10 months. Uh, the second one I made, I cracked open at 12 months, and the difference in flavour was tenfold. So the... The flavour of the cheese was just totally amazing um, when I took the maturity up to 12 months. So I'm not opening my one that I did that video on uh, until September next year, 2018. Okay, um, RM says, how do I store the cheese without a refrigerator? Um, depends on your climate. If you've got a uh, if you've got a cool climate, then if you've got a basement or a cool room or something like that, then it'll be fine. Without a fridge, uh, it goes off pretty quick. <sighs> okay. Stephen said, what's the best thing to eat cheese with? Um, look, I find that something simple like a quince paste or a fig paste is really nice when you have things like really strong cheeses because the sweetness of those fruit pastes tends to take some of the nip out of... Um, uh, out of the cheese. And I was actually um, 
uh, had a visit to my neurologist for the headache thing. I don't know how many of you know about that. That's still going on. But I visited my neurologist on Friday, and he recommended when you have a strong roke fort um, that uh, you should try some Marmite, which is, I think it's a the British version of Vegemite. It's a little bit sweeter. So it's a Marmite with some blue cheese. He reckons that, that is to die for. So there's something strange if you want to eat something with cheese. Martin says, Gavin, I realise that the culture I used for my cheddar wasn't necessarily a cheddar culture. I used M MM100. Will my cheddar still taste good like cheddar? Um, not knowing the bacteria off the top of my head for MM100, I'm not too sure it makes that. I could be Denisco. Um, will it still taste? It'll taste good. I don't know if it'll taste like a cheddar. If it's got the bacteria that makes um, um, it, it taste buttery, then you may not have the same flavour profile you're looking for. Um, Charlie says, g'day. Oh, g'day, Charlie. And um, thanks, mate, for the recipe that Kim, I can't even pronounce it. Spilled. Charlie sent me a recipe because um, he lives locally, and it's for a Maltese cheese, and I'll spell it um, because if I... If I try and pronounce it, I'll crucify it. So I spell G B E J N I E T. Um, so there's a little cheese using the small uh, cheese baskets that I have, and apparently it's a very nice Maltese cheese. I actually have tasted it. It's, at the end, it's rolled in cracked pepper, or it can be, um, and it's a tr traditional Maltese cheese, so I'm going to try that. Thank you very much, Charlie, for that recipe. Um, Brendan said, I made double cream brie a few weeks ago. The mould started to grow and then started to smell like cheese with bee linens. Mould grows ceased and the cheese just stinks like a bishop. Keep it or throw it. Um, Brendan, what I'd do is I'd start washing it. <laughs> so start washing the rind and you'll see that the bee linens will start to spread all over it and you'll have a totally different cheese than you started out with, but it'll be very creamy in the middle. And if the bee linens gets hold, remember that, I don't know if you've had it before, the washed rind flavour is just totally amazing. So um, give it a go. I'd keep going, but just wash it twice a week. Um, the, I think the reason the bee linens started to grow in the first place, it could have been too moist. The surface could have been too moist. Um, and that usually happens. It gets a, a reddish sort of colour on it. Sometimes pink, which is a different type of mould. Um, which is edible as well, but uh, it, it does impart some bitter flavours. But keep washing it. If it's bee linens, you'll see red all over it. Okay, Philip said, um, I made the queso fresco recently. The curd set was weak, but almost fell apart while mixing. Mixing, however, I still got the usual yield, but resulting cheese had no taste. Will more rennet solve it? Um, yeah, you've got a firmer curd set, or it could be the milk. I'm um, getting a lot of milk questions today. Um, so check your brand of milk as well. If it's fresh milk, um, it could be a seasonal thing because if, uh, uh, Philip, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, then they're in winter now, so they'd be going off their milk. Uh, so, yeah, very seasonal fresh milk is. Um, okay. Where are we going here? Looks like Kim's banning me, but I'm so far away. Um, so Ken... Says thanks. Good on you, mate. Uh, Mackenzie, thanks, Gavin. Do I do have a fermenter chamber for making beer? It's set around 19. Uh, are there any cheese that would age properly at that temperature? Um, 19, well, between 16 and 19 is a good temperature to um, age your uh, Jarlsberg in. If you're going to make a Jarlsberg cheese, it's great for eye formation. Uh, but you do have to keep it at 10 degrees for the first week. Um, and then I think the subsequent three weeks, you put it at between 16 and 18 or 19, I didn't, and you'll see the cheese starts to swell up and that's when the eyes de are developing. So could try that. Um, S Senior Mr. Fish, um, Gavin, when you did the Asiago, you said there, you said there is one you that is semi-hard after 21 days and grading after 10 months or more. Is that a different recipe? Um, or is that how long you age it? Uh, yeah, it's just the same recipe. You just um, age it differently. 
So 21 days is the, the semi-hard, which you saw that I made, and then you just age it longer and it becomes a grating cheese. Uh, Stephen says, do me a shout out uh, and my cousin Aiden. Hello, cousin Aiden and Stephen. Brendan, my son wants me to make cheese similar to the Mersey Valley Classic Vintage Cheddar. Do you know how the makers of Mersey Valley Vintage Cheddar make their cheese so soft and crumbly? Um, I would say it'd have a high fat content, Brendan, uh, but you'd still have to age it. To get it that crumbly, I think it would be, yeah, at least 10 months old. Um, is it sharp or is it just creamy? I'm not too sure. Um, ah, well, I don't, I know it's nasty, but shouldn't you make that uh, kazoo mazu? Right, I'm armed this time. I actually, um, in a cheese forum that I'm in, and I can't remember which one, there was a, somebody that uh, left a picture of their Stilton and there were maggots in it, or there was a little insects in it, and she wanted to know what they were. Was it safe to eat? And they were actually blowfly maggots in her Stilton. So she... Um, I can't remember if it was a lady or a man. Sorry, I shouldn't genderize it. They um, had inadvertently created a blue cheese kazu mazu. So very funny. Um, we all said don't eat it because um, you don't know what other bacteria the maggot larvae have brought along. So it's a bit of a hit and miss. I don't know how many people have um, got sick from kazu mazu. Probably none, but don't know. Don't live in Sicily. Anyway, Fact Take Records. G'day, Gavin from the UK. What's the best cheese joke you know? Um, don't know. Uh, don't know many. Um, praise cheese. Uh, they don't call me praise cheese for nothing. Kim, looks like Kim's been on a bit of a deleting spree here, which is uh, good. I haven't even seen them. You have, obviously. Uh, Michelle, um, I've bought President Brand Block Feta and noticed that it wasn't as salty and had a little taste of vinegar. Have you experimented with a less brine feta? Michelle, I have. Um, the When I first started making feta, it was a, a high saturation, so about 18% saturation brine. Now I tend to choose 10%, which I think is just right. It seems to hold together as long as it's a balanced pH and it's just the right saltiness. So um, that's that's what I like anyway. Any less, really, and it's not going to absorb too much salt. Noah says, I'm using liquid animal in it. Um, okay, right, this, so this is a question before. Definitely look at my milk. Yeah, look at your milk. If you're using just, make sure that the rennet's in date as well. Carol said, uh, just got my first cheese press yesterday and made your queso fresco recipe, which came out great. Thanks for helping me create my first wheel of cheese. You're very welcome, Carol. Um, Hi-Fi says, long time no cheese. Gavin, did you ever put together that cheese aging, aging temperature reference chart um, I mentioned to you a couple of months ago? No, unfortunately, I haven't had time to, mate. And, but I have been looking for a resource online. When I stumble across it, I'll post it up on uh, Little Green Cheese, which seems to be missing for some reason. Um, all my bits. Hang on, I'll just fix that. There we go. Oh, look. <laughs> As if by magic, Zebedee appeared. Okay. Um, Jim says, uh, I wrapped... Sorry, I vacuum wrapped some Havati. It wept away, so I cut it open, dried it, reseal it. I'd like to open in a month, cut in half, and then reseal it for further ageing. Yeah, it should do. I know when I did my Havati, the... Um, uh, same thing happened. You would have seen um, it started to flatten out. It was a really, really soft cheese. Um, so, uh, yeah, if you cut it in half after it's aged, then I think that'll be fine. I do that all the time. Once it's reached maturity, you can cut it in half and then store it and then still... I just put the other bit in the cheese fridge. It may seep a little bit more whey out because the rind is what keeps the whey, the moisture in most of the times. Uh, but if you're backpacking, there's no issues at all. Okay, um, uh, where, uh, where can I find lamb chopper cheese? What? Um, how long will it last in the fruit cheese? If you make queso contigia? Oh, I'm not sure. 
Um, Danny's got a question. What is the difference between mold lipase and sharp lipase? Uh, mold lipase comes from a calf uh, of the cow variety, and sharp lipase comes from a kid of the goat variety. That's the difference, and the difference you'll find in the amount, the the pecan flavour or, or spiciness of the final cheese, and usually it's in hard Italian cheeses. Um, but I do tend to put some mild lipes into quick mozzarella to give it that extra kick the next day. Jim said, I made uh, Emmentaler last week, uh, two-gallon batch. The recipe I followed called for half a teaspoon of Propionic Shimani. Uh, your recipe called for just one-eighth of a teaspoon. How can there be so much discrepancy? Good question, Jim. Um, I certainly know for a fact that uh, an eighth of a teaspoon uh, works perfectly uh, and puts the holes or eyes in your cheese. So I don't know why you would put half a teaspoon, goodness me, uh, a bit over the top. So not sure, but uh, an eighth of a teaspoon works, um, as uh, have been the attestment it has been the many uh, photographs I've gotten back from Curd Nerds. So, all righty, okay. Um, Brendan said, where do you get the tight wheeze cheese cloths? I can only find loose. Uh, we've got some on our website, Brendan. If you go to cheese making equipment, uh, you'll find all the cheese cloths there. So we sell the tight weave butter muslin, it's called. Um, Yosef says, thank you. Ha oh, thank you. Happy to see you live. And Kim's having a great time there. And she said the cheese cloth and give them the link. Sorry, I'm way behind here. Um, Philip said, I clean my cheese with a, sorry, I cleaned my cheese with a cloth, which was straight from the wash and had a clean smell. How my cheese has a strange, uh, cleaning product smell. I'm really worried. Yeah, I would be too. Um, yeah, don't get detergent on your, um, <laughs> on your cheese. I always, I've got a big roll of that, um, you know, that Chuck's, um, I don't know what it's called. Um. It's blue stuff, anyway, on a roll. So when I wash my cheese, I rip off a fresh um, sheet of that, uh, dip it into my brine, and then clean the cheese with that. Never cross-contaminate anything. And we'll try not to anyway. Okay, Alex says, I've seen you mix peppercorns, cranberries, chilies when making cheese. What other mix-ins would you recommend, and which cheese take the mix-ins well? I was hoping to get some time to make a... Uh, uh, a white Stilton, Alex, because that really takes well to apricots, dried apricots. Um, so I wanted to make that. I wanted to make something a little bit creamier than the queso fresco um, and with a bit of kick to it. And white Stilton is basically following the blue Stilton recipe but omitting the uh, Penicillium Roque 40. So it's probably a good cheese to try. Uh, but I will have a stab at it uh, in the new year. Um uh, Mimi says that Marmite thing reminds me of Vegemite and cheese. Vegemite and cheese stuff. Oh, the um, cheesy mite in a, in a jar. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Okay. Um, I've just skipped past heaps. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, where are we? Um, D South Texas. I'm thinking of making a gouda with... Uh, Flora Danica in place of my normal mesophilic. What should I expect? Uh, it'll be more buttery. Um, you may get some more gas production because Flora Danica has a gas producing bacteria in it. So you may get some eyes. Um, I think I had some very small eyes in my uh, Gouda. I just used a normal mesophilic um, Sacco's MO30 and that uh, doesn't have any gas producing bacteria. Um, so that they're the you'll get a they're the two properties that Floridanica will give you a buttery taste on the tongue, um, and uh, more gas production. Um, uh, Laura says, "Greeting from Illinois, below the cheese curtain. <laughs> uh, what temperature range would be suitable for a cheese cave to chill to? Uh, as long as you can keep it. So some cheeses, the lowest temperature for some cheeses." Are the bloomy whites, which about six or seven degrees Celsius. Sorry, I don't know what they are in Fahrenheit. I'm not converting. 
um, so six to seven Celsius, and then top range, I would go to about 13 Celsius, which I know is 55 Fahrenheit. Uh, so that's the temperature range you're looking for. Um, Charlie said, Gavin made your petite blue and they came out perfect. It's a great little recipe, that one. I'm glad I um, created it. Um, it's a blue cheese that you don't have all the fuss with. It just just works and goes creamy and it's just amazing. So I really do love the making that little cheese, that little blue cheese. So it's kind of like a blue camembert, but different, I suppose. Okay, uh, MJ, sorry I'm late. I'm sorry you're late too. You're missing all the fun. Um, you're welcome for the recipe, Charlie. Thank you, mate. Um, turtles. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure about turtles there, but... Um, Doug says, I'm having great luck with the fresco, raw milk, pasteurised, and different flavour adds, cranberry, sage, onions, ch chives, garlic. It is subtle, but really good. It's a great little cheese to experiment with because you don't have to wait a long, long time um, to get the results. You eat, like, eat it straight away. It's great. Um, Forvo says, uh, son was watching a Phineas and Ferb cartoon and they actually started discussing rennet and how it came from the calf's gut. A cheesy include for a kid's show that got, that totally caught me by surprise. Yeah, it's very rare that people actually know that animal rennet does come from the fourth stomach of a ruminant. Um, that can be pig, sorry, piglet, calf, kid, or lamb. <clears throat> so they're the animals that were traditionally slaughtered to get the, well, they slaughtered for the meat, of course, but a, a byproduct was the fourth stomach, which they called the rennet bag, which they dry salted and uh, added to the milk. So they actually put the milk through and wash the rennet bag through the milk to get it to coagulate. So there you go. You learn something new every day, even a kid's cartoon. Um, Sequoia said, hi, Gavin. Should Brie be gooey and creamy through and through or just on the edges? Um, it should be soft, but not runny, if that makes sense. But, yeah, it should be creamy throughout. One I made was... Uh, creamy most of the way, and I probably didn't age it enough, um, but it was very, very tasty, so it was a nice cheese. Um, but um, those bloomy white cheeses, the lower the temperature, so between 6 and 8 degrees Celsius, the better they turn out because those fungi, the penicillium candidum and geotrichum candidum, if you're using that as well, really do like those really low, low temperatures to do their magic. The high, if you go high up to about 13, you start getting ammonia production and you really do get a stench and it goes really gooey really fast. So the lower the temperature for those bloomy rinds, the better off you'll be. Okay. Um, uh, your le oh, Enver says, you're a legend. Thank you. A true living curd nerd. I try my best, Enver. Um, Martin says, uh, maybe you should keep, uh, maybe you should keep it a container fly culture just for Kazu Mazu. Maybe not. <laughs> um, Keith Schmidt says, uh, did you hear Kraft opened a branch in Israel? It's called Cheeses of Nazareth. Okay. Yep. Great joke. Uh, particularly, um, poignant for Christmas. Okay. A crust B, uh, welcome to you. Uh, what do you call a grilled cheese sandwich that's all up in your face uh, to a close for comfort food? Uh, maybe not a very good joke. Okay, right, so let's move on. Um, oh, I've skipped so far ahead. I don't know what happened there. Anyway, um, Kim's added a link in there for the Cypress Grove Lamb chopper cheese. Oh, well done, Kim. Um, Michelle says, on the plastic aging containers I see you use, is the vent, uh, is it open or closed? Uh, depends on the humidity. So if I want the humidity to be about 80%, then I leave the little thing open so some of the moisture can get out. Uh, if I want it to be 90 and higher, then I close it. There you go. That's my very simple rule of thumb. Uh, not too much science to it. Uh, Andy, g'day. Uh, Chuck's cloth is called J-Cloth in the UK. 
Yeah, that's what I was trying to say, J. Clocks, because Kim being English, or of English descent, um, she um, she calls them J. Cloths. <laughs> there you go. Um, okay. Uh, how Andy says, how can you make a cheese story set up? Uh, there's a video that I've made, which is how I made my cheese fridge. Uh, if Kim can find that and put it up, that'll be lovely. And then you'll see Andy. Um, Hello, 103 says, can you explain the difference between mozzarella, gouda and farmer cheese? Uh, yes, the differences are mozzarella is a cheese called, in a cheese category called pasta falada. So go and look that up. It means stretchy curd. Gouda is in the family of cheeses called a washed curd cheese. And a farmer's cheese is in the category of cheeses called a cooked curd cheese. So that's the difference. You're going to have to go and look those up to find out in detail. Martin says, hey, Gavin, would adding raw garlic to my curds when pressing kill the starter culture? Um, I think they would because uh, there's a lot of sulfur in raw garlic and the sulfur tends to preserve things and kill bacteria. I would rehydrate some dried uh, garlic flakes or something like that. It's probably the best way to do it. Um, Andy says, I want to dedicate a room for cheese and ageing ham. Okay, very good. Um, oh, I've lost it again. The chat is not playing properly. Right, there we go. Dan says, uh, thanks, Kevin. I'm a lipase. I'm Gavin, not Kevin. Uh, on the lipase question, just did my first Parmesan and used mild lipase, I guess we'll find out in 12 months. Oh, it'll be fine. I use mild lipase all the time. In fact, that's the only one. I find the strong lipase is just very too sharp, too quick. Um, Ethan said, tried bell paese and the curd didn't really set well. It never formed from being too moist. I use rennet tablets, not liquids. Any suggestions to prevent this or ideas on what happened? Um... Very hard to diagnose, but check these few things. Make sure that your rennet, rennet is at least single strength, which is between 240 to, sorry, between 200 and 280 IMCU. IMCU stands for International Milk Coagulation Units. So check that. Check your milk is not ultra pasteurized. See if you can just get pasteurized and homogenized, unhomogenized milk or raw milk, if that's possible at all. Um, so yeah, lots of things that could happen, uh, and that the starter culture you used with is in within the used by date. Okay. Laura says, thanks. I'm not sure why, but thanks. Um, uh, Jim says, uh, I made some manchego and even after a long pressing, there was not a smooth surface, but small divots everywhere. Hard to clean some greenish mold from the divots. Will that ruin slash affect the taste. Um, I think once you, um, with Manchego, if I remember rightly, you uh, give it a rub with olive oil. Um, I think it's after the first month or something like that. But just keep cleaning the surface with brine um, at least once a week. You'll get rid of those moulds and stuff. And then once you put the olive oil on it or, or wipe it with olive oil to start firming up, firming up the rind, then that, green mould will go away. There's no way it can breathe. There'd be no oxygen for it because the oil uh, coating is there instead. Okay, cool. So moving right along, uh, Joss said, how do you extract, extract plant rennet from plants? Is it just making tea and using that? Uh, good question, Josh. There are a few plants you can use. Um, so cardoon thistle is one where you can take the, the flower uh, parts of the thistle, the purple bits, dry them out, and you do just make a tea basically, and add that to the milk. But I don't know what purport, proportions. You can also use fig sap, but you have to use a fair bit of it, and it tends to make your cheese go bitter. Uh, there's another plant called the rennet plant, and it comes from India, um, but I can't remember the name of it. Um, but, yeah, there's a whole bit. Have a look. Google's your friend there. Um, go and check out um, extracting rennet from plants. But they're not true rennets. Uh, they have either pepsin or chymosin um, that is kind of the same as the stuff that uh, 
They manufacture now using fungi. Um, okay, so Ed says, um, hi, will you try some Romani Romanian cheese? I send you some recipes. Um, I actually did get a recipe, I think it was a Romanian one, um, and it's in my list of recipes to try. Uh, Michelle, when you make blue cheese, is it regular blue or a Danish blue? I notice that regular blue has more bite than the Danish. Yeah, there are actually different subspecies of Penicillium Roque 40, the blue mould. There's a strong, I, I stock a strong and a weak, well, it's not weak, a mild one. I tend to use the mild one, which is not as sharp. The strong one really does have that sharper flavour. I think it's just more mould in the packet. Um, but, uh, yeah, I tend to use the milder, the milder ones for the my blue cheeses. Um, Gabrielle says, hey, Gavin, great video. Awesome video. Awesome video. Thank you, mate. Um, Keith, how do you make cheese softer? Mine always turns out pretty hard. Um, softer, usually it's, oh, there's many factors. I'll start there. It's not a simple question. There's no simple cheese questions, I'm sure. Um, right, so it's the type of cheese you're making. If you're making a uh, a washed curd cheese, they tend to be softer. If you're making uh, cooked pressed cheeses like cheddars and that style of cheese, they're always going to turn out to be fairly hard. Um, it depends on the type of cheese you make, Keith. Um, you haven't really uh, amplified that. Um, so let's have a look where are we up to. Um, Gabrielle, can we use kefir in cheese making? Uh, yes, you can. In fact, there's a very good book by David Asher called The Art of Natural Cheese Making. You can go and check that out. Uh, and he exclusively uses kefir as his starter culture for many cheeses. So check that out. So that's the kefir grains, the little grain things. Mackenzie says, uh, what's the best cheese you've ever made? Uh, the one that surprised me the most and, and I thought tasted the best was hmm, probably Tilsit. It was, was just a surprise because that was my first um, uh, rind, washed rind cheese and I'd never tasted a washed rind cheese before and I remember that it just blew my mind. It was just so delicious. There wasn't much left of it after a couple of days, that's for sure. But, yeah, great, great cheese. Um, Andy, thanks, Gav, you're a legend. No problems. Matthew, can I put the cheese press in a mic, in a mic, is that mic rave to get way out faster? Can I put the cheese, also, can I melt the curds of my mozzarella for stretching in a microwave? Uh, Matthew, yes. I don't know about the press question, but you definitely can melt. Go and check out my um, quick mozzarella video. Uh, very popular, 1.5 million views. Uh, if Kim can pop that up. Kim says, is that right video for beginner's cheese left with no cheese cave? I think that is, Kim. Um, so, yeah, quick mozzarella. Go and check that out. Just search for it. It comes up number one all the time, which is great. Matthew said, ooh, and can I use sulfuric acid instead of mesophilic culture? Uh, no, you cannot. Sulfuric acid, I think you mean citric acid. Uh, yes, you can use citric acid. Uh, it's quick mozzarella, that's what it is. All right, Mackenzie, uh, nice work, Kim, thanks. Yep, good. Joanna, um, are there any new experimental cultures for creating new interesting cheeses? There are so many starter cultures. You know, the stuff that I, we've got in our shop at Little Green Workshops is just the, the top of the pile. There really is... So many different cultures. There's there's cultures that contain yeast that expand the cracks in your blue cheese so the blue will actually go all the way through it. There's cheese cultures that um, have so many different properties. There's exclusive cheese cultures just for pasta filata cheeses. Um, but if you're going to be you know a generalist and want to try most of them, all you need is a half-decent mesophilic that has um, lactobacillus, subspecies lactus and subspecies cremoris. So those two cultures for a mesophilic, you'll be fine for most most cheeses. Uh, but there are specialty cultures designed for 
um, lots of different cheeses. So it's very difficult to stock all those in our shop. But uh, there are so many different um, cheese cultures. But I think they've discovered most of them. They just uh, see what the cheeses look like and extract them. Um, as man says, does anybody buy from Gavin from the UK? Are the import charges? Um, we have had people buy from the UK, as man, and I do think they slap VAT on top. Um, but I don't charge tax for any exports. So the GST, which is our equivalent of VAT. So hopefully that answers your question. So I take the tax off. If VAT gets put on top, then you'll have to pay it, unfortunately. I know a lot of the Scandinavian countries, uh, when I export over there, uh, there are some fairly hefty VAT charges um, or import duties, they call them. Evelyn said, hi, Gavin. Uh, it's been a long time. Glad to watch you again. Thank you, Evelyn. Um, not pod. Hello, sir. Found your channel a few days ago. Love it. Cheers from Sweden. Uh, hello. <laughs> hello to you, uh, cop pod. Um, Neil Stevens, I follow your recipe for halloumi, but it was very bland. Is it supposed to? Uh, is it possible to salt it during the making process rather than after the process is complete? Uh, I haven't come across any recipes that do that. Um, I suppose you could salt the milk, but it'd be a bit funny. I don't know if it'd set properly. You could set the, you could salt the whey, but you have to put a fair bit in. Um, but normally halloumi is quite bland as a cheese to eat. It's only until you cook it, fry it in olive oil, then halloumi's flavours come out, and it is just amazing. All that salt, the dried mint. Um, if you eat it with a piece of watermelon, you know, a slice of watermelon, and the, the pan-fried halloumi, the flavours are just amazing because all the lactose that's still in the halloumi caramelises as you fry it in the frying pan. It doesn't melt. That's the type of cheese it is. It is just, every time I make halloumi, it just blows my mind. It's just a fantastic cheese. Oops, lost focus. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, so, yes, there you go. All uh, righty. Uh, Dan says, of course, it's Gavin and not Kevin. My bad. Did I mention that I also make wine? Um, not sure, Dan. Uh, thanks for making all your knowledge available to somebody in Pennsylvania. Love the videos. Cheers, mate. Um, Anne. Hello, Anne. How are you? Um, Anne says she has imported some stuff. Um, and yes, there are customs charges. Um, I don't know how much. Um, Fam Elf, hi Gavin and Kim, of course. Do you know how to make burrata and will you make a video about it? Um, burrata's pretty simple. I haven't made it yet, uh, but yes, and I will make a video eventually when I get to it. So many cheeses to make, so little time. Um, burrata is basically uh, a pasta filata, so it uses, uses the mozzarella um, recipe and you put either some cream cheese or... It depends on the filling. You can put lots of little fillings in it. And then you seal up the little bag and then you put it in brine. Bingo, boingo, you got burrata. Um, some people put thick and cream inside them. Um, there are lots of different types of fillings for a burrata, but very simple to make. Um, just follow the mozzarella recipe and put stuff in it and then seal it up. Okay, but yes, I can make an individual video about that. Uh, Michelle says, uh, I don't see you anymore in your chair of cheesy will wisdom. Uh, will it be back in your videos? Uh, look, sometimes I sit in there, but unfortunately it makes my belly look rather large. Um, not That's not what I'm sitting in there. You can see that my dog, where is he? There he is. My teddy is having a good sleep. His name's Ted um, from Teddy Ruxpin. But he's a West Highland Terrier having a good sleep in the chair there. But, yes, yeah, that's... Uh, I don't know. I may be in the chair of cheesy wisdom again soon, but it's pretty hard to do a video from all the way back there when I'm right here. Okay. Um, Mackenzie says, I love Tilsa. It is amazing. Yes, it is. Um, uh, Tan Uj, I think that's how you say it. Hi, sir. Good health to you. Um, Anne and Asman are having conversation. Can we make cheese with curd culture? Can we make cheese with curd culture? Oh, I don't understand the question. Not too sure um, what you mean by that. Um, 
Where am I? Uh, Ron says, Hi, Gavin. Trying to grow my own penicillium um, candidum, I think, on rye bread, on penicillium roke 40, glaucum on rye bread, so for, so, right, so it's a blue one. Uh, yeah, I have seen, um, in David Ash's book, he actually says how to grow the blue mould on rye bread. Um, uh, but after five days, the white mould is developing next to the blue. Oh, you're going to have a bit of a mixed bag there. Um, not too sure how that works. Uh, Ron says he extracted the penicillin from a piece of fresh uh, Roche Baron. Do you know if there's any penicillin candidum in Roche Baron? I don't know. No, I haven't heard. Actually, that's the first time I've heard of that cheese. Um, so I don't know. They might add geotrichum, which could be the other white mould. Um Mackenzie, 20% import duty. There you go. Um, which is pretty steep. Uh, it's good, that though, that I take off the 10% tax here. So you only get slugged a little bit. Don't know. Um, Ethan, do you prefer liquid, rennet, or tablets? I actually prefer liquid when I'm making uh, semi-hard and hard cheeses and fresh cheeses. The only cheese that I use tablets for is quick mozzarella. I find it works every time that way. Um, off topic, maybe mention, looks like an extremely happy dog. Yes, Teddy is very happy. He's a happy boy. Um, uh, Matthew says, is blue in the blue cheese food colouring? Because I'm allergic to food colouring. No, it's not. It's a <laughs> it's a penicillin called Penicillin Roke 40. So it's a, um, it's a mould basically, that gives the blue cheese blue flavour. Um, Kim says, very pampered dogs. Yes, they are. Femel, do you make, uh, do you ever make cheeses, especially for the holidays? What do slash would you make? I made a, um, I don't know if you saw the recent video, uh, Femel, but I made a queso fresco with cranberries, which was very festive for Christmas. Uh, mind you, I didn't make it till Christmas, so that was very nice. I have heard of uh, cheese balls that are uh, it's basically cream cheese and then rolled in uh, fruit and um, nut crushed nuts and all that sort of stuff. Um, apparently, cheese balls are very festive for this time of the year as well. Um, so cream cheese is very, very simple um, to make. Uh, and there's a cream cheese video somewhere, Kim, if she can pop that up. That would be fantastic. Um, Michael says, uh, Roche Baron is a type of blue cheese. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if they put any white mould in it. You may have picked up that from your local area. It happens. Um, Sister Mary Catherine is here. Oh, hello. How are you? Finally got the time right. Hello from New Jersey. Got my cheese cave up and running, but still no time to make cheese until after Christmas. Yes, it's that time of the year, isn't it, Sister Mary? Um, Ron says... Uh, Roche Baron is a creamy, soft, creamy blue cheese, which is covered with a thin layer of ash. I'm going to have to look it up because that sounds very interesting. All right, it's on the list. I'll check it out. Mark, thank you very much for that super chat, mate. I really appreciate it. Okay. Um, uh, Gabriel says, uh, which book gives you gives a good idea on how to make cheese in your opinion? Well, you know, a bit of a shameless self-promotion here. Go and check out my ebook. <laughs> it's called Keep Calm and Make Cheese. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Keep Calm and Make Cheese, The Beginner's uh, Guide to Cheese Make at Home. You can find it at littlegreencheese.com. Just go to that link and you'll see Cheese Book, one of the tabs. Go and check it out. $15 Australian. Can't go wrong. It's an ebook. Download it. You can read it on any PDF reader or computer. Um, Amazon Kindle thing reads PDFs and what else? Uh, iPads, all that good stuff. Or just print it out and read it for yourself. Okay, um, so that's a shameless plug for my book, Keep Calm and Make Cheese. Very good. Uh, and Kim can put a link in there somewhere, I suppose. Ethan says, anything you can do with a poorly set curd is it too late at that point after waiting longer? 
Um, a few things, a poorly set curd, um, I wouldn't tip it out. I would strain it, see what sort of cheese you can get out of that. Usually you get a cream cheese sort of thing. Uh, but really, just if you stir it and it fractures, then um, heat it up a little bit. The curd will go firmer. Um, uh, and I'm talking up to about 45 degrees Celsius. And then try and press it, salt it heavily, and you'll get something like a, um, uh, a ricotta salada is a good suggestion. Okay. Um, Matthew says, can you make blue cheese from yogurt with the penicillium blue mold in it? I have some moldy yogurt somewhere in the attic. Uh, no, I don't think you can, Matthew. Um, Melissa, I need a video on making cream cheese. Um, Kim will find it somewhere. Sorry, can't find the cream cheese video. Uh, there's two of them there somewhere, Kim, um, if you go and search on the channel. So if you go to the panel chart, uh, sorry, go to the channel page for for this channel and there's a little search thing. Not, not many people know it's there. It's uh, after the about tab, little search thing. If you search in there, you're searching just within my channel. And if you put in cream cheese, the video will come up. Okay. Okay, Gabriel says thanks, will do. Um, Kim's saying, what's it called? Uh, uh, Nurato, hello, cheese man, how are you? Hello, how are you, Nurato? Uh, Kim has found a, a link to the book, and I'm fresh out of questions, and it's four minutes to go until the end of the show. So that is, um, that is great. Now, it's still time if you want to support the show. Don't forget you can super chat, you know, just like Mark did. And thank you very much, Mark. I appreciate that $10. Um, Try to put the link in, but it won't let me. Oh, there you are. There's cream cheese. Well done, Kim. Thank you very much. So you can super chat. Otherwise, you can support the show. Uh, Patreon is another way. Um, or you can um, pop over to littlegreenworkshops.com.au and, uh, and we've got some lovely cheese making supplies, kits, kits for Christmas. Anybody from Australia, uh, we will be able to ship within time for Christmas, no problems at all. And we've got lots on stock, so go and check them out. They're all cool. Um, the ebook, the link's been put in there, but pop over to littlegreencheese.com as a link to the uh, ebook, Keep Calm and Make Cheese. And finally, also at Little Green Cheese, you'll find. I think it's about 63 episodes of my podcast, Cheese Making Podcast, where you'll find lots and lots of uh, cheesy questions answered uh, and hear my voice drone on for hours and hours. Or, of course, you can stay on the channel and check out some more cheesy videos. There's at least two released a week, this live chat, plus either a recipe or a taste test or a technical one. And as I started at the, mentioned at the start of the show, there's quite a few videos coming up um, before Christmas, um, so that'll be good. And then we're taking a break for two weeks, uh, but I'll announce that either on the community tab um, of the channel um, or uh, via the next live show. So next week's show will be uh, a festive Christmas one, um, and uh, that will go ahead. Uh, but the week after, we're going to have a break. Anyway, thanks for watching, Curd Nerds. I appreciate your time. Without it, the show just doesn't happen. Um, so, um, from that, I thank you from the bottom of my heart, uh, that, uh, you turn up week after week and give Teddy a scratch. All right, hang on. See, didn't even move a muscle. <laughs> He's a well-loved dog. Anyway, see you later, Curd Nerds, and, uh, we'll see you next time. Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. G'day, Curd Nerds. Well, g'day, Curd Nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds. Well, g'day, curd nerds.